Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made this dapper looking little sloth cake. So we will get right into that in a second. I just wanted to say if you have any cake themes you'd like me to do, feel free to suggest those below. I'm going to build my cake in two parts. So I'm going to start out with the base and for that I've got two six inch cakes that I've cut in half and I'm going to be filling those with some Swiss meringue buttercream that I've added a little bit of melted chocolate to. The Swiss meringue buttercream recipe I use will be linked below. So once my cake is stacked up, I'm taking a five inch round cake board and I'm placing that right into the middle. I'm going to carve my cake because I want it to be more rounded. So starting from the top, I'm cutting right where the cake board is and then just tapering out so I'm not really touching the bottom two layers that much. So once I was done carving, I had this general shape. Unfortunately, my camera didn't film when I was carving the very bottom, but you can see that I just took my knife on an angle and carved in. So the very bottom of the cake just rounded in slightly. The next thing I did was my crumb coat. So I added a thin layer of my buttercream all around my cake. And then I set that in the fridge for about 25 minutes until it firmed up. For the head of my sloth, I'm starting out with a 6 inch cake and then I'm stacking a 5 inch cake on top of that. This piece is actually going to be the bottom of the head of my sloth. I just wanted to carve this a little before I added everything together just to make it easier on myself. So I'm taking my knife and on an angle, I'm just cutting away the sides of the cake just so the gap between the 6 inch and the 5 inch isn't so large. I'm going all the way around, just making small cuts and then holding my knife so it just kind of tapers in. It certainly doesn't have to be perfect because I will carve this more once the entire head is assembled, but once I had this general shape, I added a schmear of buttercream to the top of my 5 inch cake and then using that same 5 inch cake board that I used to help me carve the body, I'm just placing that on top. Next I flipped that over and then I stacked on two more six inch cakes just using more of my chocolate buttercream. So once my cakes were stacked up to this point, I have the five inch on the bottom and then I have three six inch cakes on top. So I'm gonna go around with my knife and just round out the edges and make sure that everything kind of seamlessly fits together. Once I was done carving the bottom of the head, I grabbed my knife and just rounded out the very edge of that top layer. To get the roundness on the top of the head, you could just add more layers of cake and then carve that out. But to save myself some time, I have a six inch ball pan that I'm lining with some saran wrap. And then I took the off cuts from my cake and I mixed that together with some buttercream to get like a cake pop texture. So it wasn't too dry or crumbly. I could roll it in my hand and it would create a nice ball that wouldn't fall apart. I packed that into the bottom of my ball pan and I didn't fill this up because I knew I wouldn't need like the whole thing. I just filled it up about halfway and then I packed it down with my hands and then I used the bottom of a cup as well. So you want the surface to be quite even and then I pulled that out because the saran wrap was in there, it came out really easily and then I flipped that over and placed that on top of the head of my cake. So once the cake was all stacked together, I just used my hands to make sure everything was in place. I didn't want this to be a perfectly round head, I wanted it to be more like an oval shape. So I just went around with my knife and cut away any little bits that were poking out. But this was the general shape that I ended up with. I took the body out of the fridge, which was now nicely chilled, and I added some supports. So I just put in some straws and then cut those so that they were flush with the cake. I added a little bit of buttercream to help the head stay in place and then using a cake lifter I placed that right on top and just lined it up. Next I crumb coated the head of my sloth and then placed my whole cake into the fridge for about a half hour. Mm -hmm. 
once my cake was ready for the final ice, I added a thick layer of buttercream all around the entire thing, and then I got it as smooth as I could with my spatula. To finish it off and make it extra smooth, I used a piece of cardstock. You could also use acetate, and I just went around the entire cake. Cardstock bends so it'll form to the cake, and it can really smooth out the rounded head, and it just allows you to get a smoother finish than you could with your spatula. I placed that back in the fridge to chill and then started on my fondant. Now I looked at a ton of pictures and there was brown sloths and gray sloths and they had all different textures and colors so I just went with the brown because I had tons of brown fondant already on hand. So I'm rolling this out onto a cornstarch surface to about an eighth of an inch thick and I want it to be quite a large piece. Once it was the size that I wanted, I picked it up with my rolling pin and then draped it over the top of my cake and I moved really quickly to try and smooth out the fondant over the head as fast as I could. I'm covering this cake in two pieces so it will crease and pleat at the bottom of your fondant in this step. That's totally fine. I'm going to cut that away anyway. I want this to be smoothed down right about where the neck is so where the it kind of dips in on the sides of the cake. So once the head was covered and there was no pleats, I took a knife and I just went around where I wanted the kind of neck area to be. So I went really slow and made sure my line was as straight as possible all the way around. For the bottom of my cake, I'm rolling out another piece of brown fondant, this time quite long and just measuring to make sure that it's gonna go all the way around my cake as well as be tall enough to cover the whole thing. I trimmed the sides a bit with my pizza cutter and then I rolled up the entire thing onto my small rolling pin and uncurled it against the cake. I knew I was going to have some excess at the bottom and that's totally okay. The important thing is that the seams at the, the middle where the neck is line up. I had a bubble form in my fondant and all I did to fix that was poked it with a really sharp small pin and then just gently guided the air out through that hole and smoothed it down. I took a scrap piece of my brown fondant and I rolled that into a ball and I'm just rubbing that gently over the entire cake because a regular fondant smoother wouldn't really help you with that shape so this just allows you to get it extra smooth. For the excess at the bottom, I'm just using my pizza cutter to trim that away. Now that the body is covered in fondant, I'm going to start on the face. So I have some white fondant that I added a little bit of ivory food coloring gel to. I made myself a template for the face. So I have this oval shape here and then to the top, I kind of added like, imagine the top of a heart to either side. I cut that shape out using my X-Acto knife and then using a little bit of water I just press that to the front of the face. For the patches on either side of the eye I have some dark brown fondant and then I made myself another little template. Just imagine a big end of a popsicle stick. I cut out two of those and then using some water I attach those to either side of the face just kind of curving down the bottom bit so they weren't completely straight. Using my balling tool I marked in two holes on either side and then just made them bigger so that they were an oval shape. I rolled out two black balls and press those into the indents I just made. For the nose, I'm using more of my dark brown fondant and I rolled it into a oval shape and then just using my thumbs, I tapered down the bottom a bit and grabbing my balling tool again, I added two indents for the nostrils. Using my fondant tool, I just marked in a little smile. 
My sloth is going to be wearing a bow tie, so I rolled out some black fondant and then cut out a long strip using my pizza cutter. I brushed a little bit of shortening all around the seam and then added my black strip so that the two ends met in the back. Once I had wrapped it all the way around, I just used my X-Acto knife to cut a seam at the back. For the arms and the legs, I have my light brown fondant and then I'm rolling out this long teardrop shape and flattening that against my work surface. I didn't need to use any water or shortening to attach the limbs to the body because it stuck just fine, but you could just brush some on if you find that it's not sticking. Using my balling tool, I'm adding three indents to the very end of each of the limbs. With some white fondant, I started out with a little ball that I rolled out into a teardrop shape and made sure the very tip of that was quite pointed. And then using some water, I attached each of my little nails into the indents that I made. I wanted to make a pretty simple bow tie, so I have some purple fondant that I've rolled into two equal balls, and then I'm going to make another really fat teardrop shape and press that against my work surface. Once I have two of those, I push them together so that the tapered ends were meeting, and then using the back of my paintbrush, I just marked in two indents on either side, and with another little ball of purple fondant, I rolled that out until it was a bit longer, and then just place that into the middle. With a little bit of water, I just attach that right to the front. For the top hat, I'm rolling out some black fondant, so it's a little bit on the thicker side. And then using my cutter, I'm cutting out a circle. I'm just cleaning up the edges with my fingers and then I'm going to set that aside. Then I want to create a cylinder shape. So I'm taking some black fondant and I'm rolling that out and I'm just going back and forth and pressing each end against my work surface while I kind of spin it around. This creates like a really flat top because I don't want it to be super rounded. You can see I've placed the bottom of my hat, so that circle that I cut out, kind of off center on the sloth's head, and then using my fingers, I just slightly turned up either side so it wasn't laying completely flush against the head. To help keep my hat firmly in place, I added a skewer into the middle of that cylinder shape, and I'm gonna press that directly in the center of my circle of black fondant. And then to finish it off, I added a strip of purple around the base of my hat. For the eyes, I added two little balls of white fondant to either side for the catch lights, just to give it a little more depth. So this was the final look, guys. I friggin love sloths so I think this guy turned out super cute. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it.